Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a show where we will provide you fresh insights into South Asia's geopolitical, strategic and security situation. Let's take a look at the headlines first. Pakistan reaping the bitter harvest of its consistent support to terrorism. National Investigation Agency made six arrests in connection with a foreign-based pro-Khalistan terrorist organization. And Border Security Force foils Pakistan's attempts to smuggle narcotics into India. Well, life has come full circle for Pakistan, a country that established and continues to operate terror factories from its soil, disrupted peace in India and Afghanistan, and organizes safe haven for the dreaded global terrorist, is enduring a deadly militant attack spree. Tens of dozens have died in recent months. Two of them were killed last week alone. What has led to the situation escalating to the point of no return? What went so wrong in the all-powerful Pakistan military's plan that they are feeling the heat and threat? Have chickens come home to roost? Is Pakistan reaping what it sowed? Is it enduring the repercussions of its actions against its own people? Or is it what it claims a victim of terrorism? Our report makes an attempt to find answers to all these questions. As many as two Pakistani security personnel were killed, allegedly after hours long standoff between unknown militants and Pakistan army in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. The northwestern Pakistani region, which was historically a safe haven for terrorists, has been witnessing a resurgence in infiltration activities with Pakistan army and other security forces made to confront attacks of one or other nature every other day. Many in Islamabad attribute these violent attacks to Taliban's return in Afghanistan in 2021, who they accuse of providing both man and material support to the previously lying defunct tentacles of the Taliban and other terrorist organizations. The attacks, which ranged from ambushes, suicide attacks and IED blasts to direct confrontations, killed 282 Pakistani security personnel in 2022. 2023 has been no different with militant attacks claiming several Pakistani security personnel lives in the first five months. The pressing question that emerges at this point is why Pakistan is under fire? How can a terrorist-friendly country face the wrath of the same people? You see, Pakistan has been involved in fomenting trouble and terrorism, uh, especially the cross-border terrorism against India, earlier against the previous Afghan government also. And uh, so Pakistan has become a nucleus of terror groups and has been supporting them, nurturing them. And now that it is uh, facing, so it is like the, uh, like the syndrome that's going to bite them. And they, have, they should not forget, we used to have a story of Basmasur and that story must give some lessons to the world that those who perpetrate and perpetuate terrorism is eventually going to attack them. So they cannot take um, any solace that they are suffering from this so the world should look at differently. Their track record is dismal and abysmal and I think that they need to be uh, continued to be monitored by the world, whether it is FATF, whether UN Security Council or the international organization, international bodies. So Pakistan and terrorism have become synonymous. So I have, I have sympathies for the Pakistani people who are suffering, but not for the state and the deep state, which are actually engineering all these kind of attacks. Many blame Pakistan for the situation it is in today. While it is confirmed that some attacks are attributed to the TTP, Others are solely of domestic nature, originating from the rebellious tendencies within marginalized communities in Pakistan. Pakistan is accused of carrying out atrocities against minorities with impunity. Scores of dissenting voices and youths have been picked and thrown in jails. Apart from the people in Punjab, which is Pakistan's favored province, people in other parts of Pakistan be it Balochistan, KPK or Sindh, are never accorded treatment at par with basic human standards. 
and when they demand rights, they are arbitrarily detained, imprisoned, incommunicado, and sometimes even hacked to death. According to a recent report by PANK, the Human Rights Department of Baloch National Movement, there has been 31 torture victims, 32 enforced disappearances, and three extrajudicial killings in the month of April this year. A widespread environment of repression with no glimmer of hope in sight, a section of these oppressed people is compelled to put up resistance with arms. Well, as far as human rights violations are concerned, we have seen it, the, the treatment meted out to minority communities in Pakistan that have reduced significantly from what they were in 1947. And there is a conscious effort uh, to alienate them and to uh, denigrate their dignity. And uh, they, so there are violations of all kinds against uh, the minorities, whether they are even the Muslim minorities of different kind who do not uh, adhere to the official line of the, uh, the, the Islamic line that the government of Pakistan follows. Uh, today the country is going through a complete mess, uh, politically, economically, militarily and otherwise. And therefore, they, they, they need to look at their own population. They are just alienating people and this is going to cause a major problem for them. So the human rights violations are rampant uh, in the country, which has been deported by all kinds of agencies. Uh, and this is for the Pakistani establishment to have a look at it. Pakistan has set itself a grim stage of continued insurgent attacks by not just normalizing injustice and marginalization but actively engaging itself in grave human rights violations. By disregarding dignity and rights of people in parts of Balochistan and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Pakistan has only fostered a sense of discontent. Sustained deprivation and mistreatment have also resulted in people now altering their medium of resistance to violence. A rise in such incidents is also posing a persistent threat to the country's security and stability. Absence of proper safeguards and protections for human rights creates a fertile ground for insurgency to emerge and grow. Some say that before seeking sympathy as a victim on the global stage, Pakistan should acknowledge its own misdeeds and make sincere efforts to rectify them. Others, however, say that asking Pakistan to change the way it operates is expecting too much from a terror sponsor and a human rights violator. An essential part of Pakistan's state-sponsored cross-border terrorism is narco-terrorism, which is used to finance and carry out asymmetric warfare against its neighbors. The nation's security services have been collaborating with terrorist organizations on a kill two birds with one stone plan to import both guns and drugs into India using the same pathways. Take a look at the two-pronged technique that Pakistan's drug trade uses to introduce illegal narcotics to Indian youth on the one hand while funding state-sponsored terrorism on the other. On numerous occasions, Drug seizures in various parts of India have shown that Pakistan is not only smuggling terrorists into the nation but also smuggling drugs. The actions of narco-terrorist networks operating out of Pakistan have increased and they are now continuously attempting to transport drugs into India over the international border between Pakistan and India. Given its location on the Golden Crescent of Opium Cultivation, also known as the Death Crescent, by anti-drug organizations around the world, Pakistan is a significant supply of drugs for other nations in the region. This crescent-shaped area, which also contains Iran and Afghanistan, makes for an ideal transit location for drugs being trafficked out of Pakistan. Gujarat, Rajasthan, Punjab and Jammu and Kashmir are the main border states via which drugs are transported into India. Recently, border security personnel shot down a Pakistani drone carrying narcotics across the Atari Waga border. As per the officials, the gross weight of the recovered consignment of suspected narcotics is around 5.5 kg. 
चार जून 2023 को बीएसएफ के ट्रूप्स ने एक ड्रोन की आवाज़ सुनाई दी और वो नीचे नीचे धीरे धीरे ड्रिफ्ट हो रहा था तो तकरीबन रात के पौने दस बजे करीब वहाँ पर एक ड्रोन गिरा हुआ था प्लस तीन पैकेट हीरोइन के जो कि जब वे किया गया इसका तकरीबन 3.1 पॉइंट के जीज के करीब इसका वेट था और पिछले दो तीन दिन से इसकी इनपुट आ रही थी जो कि एसएसपी रूलर अमृतसर ने और हमारे डीसीजी के द्वारा ये इनपुट दी गई थी कि पाकिस्तान से जो स्मगलर्स हैं वो ड्रोन के थ्रू हीरोइन की स्मगलिंग करेंगे This is not an isolated incident. There have been many cases of illegal drug trafficking from across the borders lately. More than 80% of drug flow in India comes from Pakistan. The figure is based on survey conducted by a European agency. It reveals how Pakistan has an absolute monopoly in subcontinent's narcotics trade. Pakistan's drug trade employs a two-pronged strategy. On one hand it provides funding for state sponsored terrorism and on the other it aims to introduce indian youth to illegal substances In Jammu and Kashmir drug abuse affects more than 6 lakh people according to a recent research by the National Drug Dependence Center at AIMS All socio economic strata in the Kashmir valley are experiencing a startling increase in drug addiction A new drug user inevitably enters Kashmir's drug rehabilitation facility every hour. In 2016, the Srinagar location of the Government Medical College's oral substitution therapy clinic only recorded 489 cases. By 2021, that number had risen to nearly 10,000. The security apparatus and the government of Jammu and Kashmir have both been shocked by the worrisome 2000% increase over the previous 5 years. Pakistan's formal economy is in a poor state. Everyone knows that the narco money is being used to fund the terrorists as well as to generate money through irregular means. and therefore with hakani in the government in afghanistan uh, pakistan finds that this is a lucrative trade and therefore the drug cartels are trying every possible means to send the narcotics into india and create a market and also spoil the new generation uh, they would like to certainly find a number of means wherever they can induct it easily whether through drones or through coast or through gujarat coast or whichever coast they find that the security is slightly lax and therefore i think they will exploit all possible uh, means uh, to induct narcotics into india drug trafficking across the borders give terrorism financial support and if not stopped immediately could damage the lives of the region's children drug revenue particularly heroin revenue funds separatist operations and propagates other centrifugal tendencies furthermore the widespread availability of drugs and narcotics increases domestic consumers desires for them which when consumed leads to dysfunctional behavior which in turn causes problem with law and order in society therefore india needs to adopt a comprehensive approach to tackle this challenge and let us now turn our attention to india's jammu and kashmir where the security forces have now started a number of operations to dismantle the network of pak backed terrorism islamabad is making desperate attempts to launch infiltration bids in the region However, Indian Army, with the help of Jammu and Kashmir Police, is putting an end to these terrorists with a commitment to upholding peace and tranquility in the area. A report. The neighboring country of Pakistan and its proxies have made repeated attempts to disturb the peace in Jammu and Kashmir region. Terrorists are being given funds and training so they may sneak into Jammu and Kashmir. and assault security personnel and locals in the region 
However, Indian security forces consistently thwart infiltration attempts and eliminate terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir, putting a stop on Islamabad's nefarious efforts. In the latest, security forces neutralized a terrorist in the Dasal Mehri village area in Rajauri. हमारा स्कूल था ऊपर जहाँ पे दसल कराइयाँ हम सुबह घर से निकले थे जहाँ पे आए तो पता लगा कि ऊपर इनकाउंटर चल रहा है बच्चों के फ़ोन भी सुबह से आ रहे थे बच्चों को तो हमने मना कर दिया स्कूल में नहीं आना और यहाँ पे जो पूरा इन्होंने गार्डन किया हुआ है यहाँ से किसी को ऊपर जाने दे रही है हमारी सेफ्टी के लिए रात का इनकाउंटर जो सुबह तीन बजे चल द रिसेंट एनकाउंटर वॉज द थर्ड सच इंसिडेंट इन जम्मू प्रोविंस इन द पास्ट फ्यू डेज Earlier the border security force shot dead a suspected Pakistani intruder on the international border in the Samba district of Jammu division. On June 1st, the army in Jammu and Kashmir foiled an infiltration bid with the arrest of three terrorists along the line of control in Poonch district. They also had a powerful 10 kg improvised explosive device in their possession. frustrated with ongoing development and peace in Jammu and Kashmir Pakistan is using all the tricks in its book to incite terrorism in the region According to experts Pakistan is using a mix of social media local influencers and narcotics to radicalize the Kashmiri youth to pick up the gun However most of its moves have either failed or backfired Vigilant Indian forces have thwarted almost all of their ill designs in the past few weeks a significant number of terrorists have been eliminated while many others have been apprehended pakistan is expected to continue its strategy of bleeding india with a thousand cuts particularly in jammu and kashmir launching terrorist attacks of varied intensities india has so far adopted a number of countermeasures including launching of cross border surgical strikes it is important to remember that eternal vigilance is the price of liberty we have to make sure that our counter infiltration grid is strengthened the gaps are eliminated our base camps and our the uh, pickets and posts are well guarded to avoid any attacks and the movement that we undertake in the insurgency affected areas particularly in the jammu region is carried out with a view to eliminate any scope of ambushes despite all the embarrassment and name calling at various global forums pakistani continues to use terrorism as an instrument of its state policy in a sophisticated world where the other countries are looking forward to establishing peace harmony and developing new technologies for the advancement of world settlement pakistan's steel policy of terrorism is causing violence and is creating an environment of distrust in the world residents settled near the border areas are living in constant fear due to frequent firing along the border from the pakistani side pakistani army generals who are the real masterminds behind most of the terrorism across the globe believe that the world won't notice their devious plans but to their surprise not only all of their diabolic activities are being monitored but being given a befitting reply by the indian forces moving on national investigation agency nia has recently arrested six close aides of the banned khalistan tiger force ktf operators The investigation agency raided 10 places simultaneously in Punjab and Haryana as part of sustained crackdowns on the pro-Khalistan terrorist organizations. Khalistan movement although no longer resonates with the majority of Sikh community in India, Pakistan has been continuously fueling this anti-India sentiment from outside. To talk more about the issue, we are now joined by the retired captain Alin Gore, an expert on the national security affairs. So Mr Anil Gore National Investigation Agency has arrested close aides of foreign based pro Khalistan terrorist in Punjab and Haryana. So do you think this anti India Khalistan terrorism is essentially a part of Pakistan's sinister designs? See Pakistan has always been trying 
to December and create dissatisfaction in India. Earlier, when the Khalistan movement started with the Nail Singh Bindrawala also trying to head it and Operation Blue Star took place and then Bindrawala and his followers were killed over there in Golden Temple. After that, they started Operation Topak in 1990 by General Ziaulak and sent in all these uh, terrorists, trained terrorists into Kashmir Valley so that they could raise some issues over there and they thought that the locals would also support these terrorists and then Kashmir was to be taken away from India. This has been their thought process right since 1947. Unfortunately, Pakistan has not succeeded in that. Now, even their Operation Topak today, it has failed miserably because since 90s, what the terrorism was there in Kashmir Valley has totally been finished and especially now after the abrogation of Article 370 and on 5th August 2019, there has been no voices raised against separatism or pro-Pakistan voices in Kashmir Valley. And after that, NIA has started now chasing the money trail with, in which after getting proof of how funds were being channelized to all these pro-Pakistani uh, separatists and other people, they have arrested those people and also seized their accounts. Now all this is happening because Pakistan does not want to stand down on the very fact or does not even want to acknowledge the very fact that Jammu and Kashmir had acceded to India in 1947 by Maharaj Singh as per the India Independence Act and therefore it belongs to India. But Pakistan wants to now take over this entire territory by force and they have failed miserably. Now after Kashmir they have again restarted uh, getting these Khalistani elements whosoever, they, wherever they are, they are trying to cultivate them, they are trying to give them money, they are trying to give them drugs, so that they would send these uh, in, into Punjab and create again the same old situation which was there in the late 80s in Punjab. But this also they will not succeed because Indian government has seen through their plans and also the public at large and no one in Punjab also is ready for a Khalistan they say that this is a voice of people who are totally and totally under the Pakistani thumb. Therefore, this is not going to succeed at all. Sir, do you think this pro-Khalistan sentiment is garnering much traction ever since Amritpal was arrested? See, as far as Amritpal is concerned, Amritpal tried to come in and take over as the next Bindrawala. In fact, there are reports that he had also got plastic surgery done on his face so that he would resemble Bindrawala. His way of walking, his way of carrying that arrow and other AK-47 with him was also modelled on the lines of Bindrawala. But the government of India saw through his plan and saw through his all his, what he was trying to do and came down heavily on him and his supporters. Now, after coming down with on him and his supporters, this uh, trial of these people who were trying to create again a sort of a Khalistan movement in uh, Punjab has failed. They have arrested them and put them behind bars where they belong. Pakistan is the main originator and the main supporter, I would say, and also the main perpetrator of all these actions that are being taken by these people over here. So why is the Western world also letting this Khalistan movement alive, especially in Canada? See, there is a problem is with Canada authorities. Now, it is very clear that they are also having vote bank politics because wherever this voice of this Khalistani movement is there, there is a lot of vote bank of the Sikhs over there and these politicians are trying to cater to that. This is a very dangerous game and our external affairs minister has also cautioned Canada on this, that this way relations between the two countries will not be very cordial. Because India is very clear on one part that any country which is harboring these terrorists who are bent upon breaking India will create a disharmony into the cordial relations between the countries. Moreover, the problem there is that there are inimical factors like 
there is a person called George Soros who has openly declared that he does not want Mr. Modi as the Prime Minister. There are other people who are trying to, you know, come into it or muscle into, into the power game and therefore are using these elements to create a sort of a hype that there is a dissatisfaction amongst the uh, Punjabi people in Punjab and uh, elsewhere. But this is not so. All these people who are doing it are just a handful of them and they require to be come down. The law in those countries requires to come down heavily on them. If they do not, then they would they should think that India is also not going to be having very good relations and if or so this happens, then these countries are to be blamed because their own police is not taking the law and order to the right conclusion with these separatists. Well, thank you for your insights on the issues. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at nin.com. This is Lifakshi Kurana signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.